Hello, hello! Have you ever wondered if you can watercolor on felt? Well, you can, and I'm totally gonna show you how! All right, let's get going! All right, first things first, I wanna chat about the different types of watercolor and the different techniques that we can do. We have a lot of different types. I'm sure we all have grown up on our beautiful little Crayola pan watercolors. So these are actually really, really great, um, especially if you're just getting started in watercoloring and especially if you're just getting watercoloring on felt. I would highly suggest to start with just a really cheap Crayola watercolor pans. They actually work phenomenal. They have a decent amount of colors. This is the 24 color set and as you can see, you get quite a few different colors. So I'm just gonna pull a few pan, a pan out to kind of show you. Anyways, so this is just one pan. Basically, they're called little uh, watercolor cakes and you put them inside of a pan and they're basically like dehydrated that you're rehydrating with water. So this is just one version of watercolor. Another version of watercolor is basically already liquid watercolor. So this comes in a liquid form. So it comes with a little dropper inside and you can pull out the watercolor you want, put it on your palette and just go straight to work with already pre-watered, I mean it's not pre-watered, it's just a liquid watercolor. This comes in a lot of different brands. So Echoline is one brand and then Dr. PH Martin is another brand. The, his watercolors are the Hydrus Fine Art watercolors. These ones are so fantastic, the PH Martin brand. All of their stuff is just super um, pigmented and it works really, really amazing. So this one actually dried out a little bit, but um, as you can see, it is just a liquid watercolor that you can just put on your pan um, and just get to work. Uh, the next kind of watercolor that you can get is actually tube watercolor. This is a brand, this was actually a pretty inexpensive brand. This was like $20 for all of these colors. So I will say if you're gonna start mixing colors, mixing tubed watercolors is the way to go. It's just so much easier. You can really fine tune because it comes out like a little bit, it almost comes out looking like acrylic paint and it's more pasty. As soon as you throw some water in this, it just opens up and it becomes a pure watercolor. It's basically like where this is the concentrated form that we're like diluting back down to water. This little tube will get you ridiculously far amounts of watercolor. Also, when you're mixing colors, these just mix so easily because you can just grab the tiniest bits and mix them really, really well. All right, so those are the three types of watercolor. And I'm gonna kind of show you what they look like in my pan here. So this great little pan, this thing is amazing. So I already actually used this color and that's why I'm gonna use it again. I'm gonna put the tiniest bit on here. And this is what I love about this pan and I love about watercolors is that I can literally rehydrate any of these colors on here by just adding some water and the color will come back perfectly and you could just kind of keep using it and using it, which is super handy. So I'm gonna go ahead. So this is also a water brush pen. These are super fabulous. It's got a little water tank on one end and then a brush tip on the other end. So by just squeezing, it actually releases the water to the brush tip. This is so helpful for water coloring. I'm right now just gonna use it as a dropper. So I'm gonna throw it in my paint here, grab a brush and just mix it up. And then now you have watercolor. So this particular type is gonna be very, very pigmented and a very solid color. See, I'm getting a little bit water in another color and it's starting to mix already, but that's okay. This is how you would create watercolor with a tube set. So there's a few different techniques on how to watercolor. So we're gonna go over the most obvious one up front, which is just literally painting it on. Whenever I paint on watercolors, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bowl of water here. And I'm just actually like soaking my felt in water. So this allows the, the paint to just move really, really well on the felt. So I have my pink here and I'm just gonna brush it on. And because the felt is already hydrated with water, it's just kind of also like blending it and sucking some of it down a little bit. So we can just kind of keep going. I'm just bringing it down. 
Less is more when it comes to watercoloring on your felt because it will slowly follow that water and just kind of slowly work its way down. So you want to definitely be careful with how much you're using. So I, you could add more water and just kind of blend it. But I want to show you the difference between this is a very pigmented watercolor and I'll show you this is what it looks like dried. So this is what it will look like depending on how much paint you apply. Whereas if we want to use say the Crayola version, this is kind of what that looks like. All right, so let me show you the Crayola brand real quick. So I'm gonna hydrate some of this here, add quite a bit of water to it, grab another petal. Oops, I did not so pre-soak that one. So why is it not behaving the same? Okay. So, and then this is what it'll look like with the Crayola one. So I would say the Crayola is a little bit smoother because it just goes on much smoother than the tube paint. But it all kind of depends on the project and the look and the feel that you want. So if you want the smooth version, I would just stay stick with the Crayolas. If you want more like a painting kind of a look and more depth and more grittiness and more, um, you know, more just variation with your color, I would say go with the higher end tube paint. So those are those two versions and this is just me painting it on. Another great thing that I would suggest highly doing is whenever you're gonna paint a flower, I would try to stick away, stay away from just doing whatever you think in your head sometimes. Sometimes it really, really helps to jump on Pinterest, jump, jump on Google, find real flowers out in nature and figure out the color scheme and how nature colors their flowers and then kind of just mimic that the best you can with your felt. I've noticed when you start doing things just like off the top of your head, you're like, oh, that looked beautiful in my head. And then you're like, oh, did not turn out the way I wanted it to. So I would just make sure you're just looking up examples, looking up real nature so that you can translate it right into your felt. For instance, this one, you could do multiple colors here. Like, so you've got your pink and then now it's like, oh, I'm blending in some yellow here. You know, like, this is the fun where you can just like really blend in a bunch of different colors too to make a really dynamic flower. So don't be limited to just some colors like I did green at the bottom here and then pink on the top and you know, just really lean in and have some fun with this. Okay, so another way to dye your felt flower petals is to dip them. I like using my already liquid watercolor for this because it just makes things so much easier and quicker if you're gonna do this route. So I'm actually gonna leave it like this. So I'm gonna grab a petal, get it wet, squeeze out as much as I can. So now I'm gonna dip this into my liquid. This is the key when you're doing this. Less is more. It's gonna soak up that liquid so fast that you wanna do the tiniest little bit and kind of quick. Don't let it just sit in there or it's just gonna like suck up all the ink. So I'm just gonna do like a really quick dip and if you notice like it's already it's already moving down and this will just kind of slowly seep down and give some nice veining to your work now i'm letting like gravity do a lot of work right now by like holding it this way and i'll just as like the ink just slowly works its way through all the fibers this is also really fun because you kind of never know what you're gonna get you can layer different colors here and it just kind of gives like your petal just like some really good variation. Usually when petals form colors in nature too, it's like coming from the stem and it kind of just blends up as well. So this is just kind of another version of how that's happening. Another thing too that I will say real quick is whenever I'm letting my petals dry, I kind of just shape them in the shape that I want because they will dry in that shape. Just like these ones are dry and they're just already shaped and formed. So this is the opportunity that if you want to really give your flowers any sort of shape and movement, you can kind of pull on them, give them some wrinkles, give them some movement, and then just kind of put them down on your drying surface in the shape that you kind of want to leave them. And it just gives them a little bit more just definition and more realism when you go to actually like 
create your flowers. So the only kicker about watercoloring is that if you're gonna do it this way, you need to let your petals dry 100% before you can actually go and work with them. So I've noticed it takes about 24 hours for them to dry, which is kind of a letdown sometimes when you're just like, oh, I wanna do my project. But so just think ahead if you're gonna wanna use this that you're gonna need to make sure that you allow enough time to let them dry. So the next way that I water use watercolors on my felt flowers is with an airbrush gun. So this is actually super fun. I will link below this airbrush gun. It is fully not contained. I love this little guy. He has his own little compressor. This is the compressor right here and it's all battery charged. So I can plug it in and then get it fully charged and then totally work with it. Um, the only thing is you have to keep these in really good condition as far as clean. You have to make sure every time you put a color in it, make sure you are cleaning it very thoroughly or they will get jammed really, really easily. So that's the only kicker. There's a little bit more cleanup and that sort of a thing with them, but they give such a fun look. And you don't necessarily have to wait for them to dry 24 hours before using them because you're literally just like airbrushing them and then they're basically ready to go. When I use my airbrush gun, I only use my liquid watercolors in here. I don't try to mix or dilute anything and try to put it in here because when you start doing that, you can easily clog these things up. I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick. This is actually very, very low on this. I'm kind of just dumping it in. But because it's already been charged, you can easily just... So with your airbrush gun, make sure you have a well covered area because there's definitely a lot of um, overspray that can happen. So what I'm doing is I have an already curled petal here and I'm just gonna, oh, this is getting a little ugly. And then just kind of gently airbrush the ends right there. So this is fun if you wanna like layer it. This gets like a nice gradation of color and whatnot, but like, look how fun. And just different that looks. And it's just so simple and easy. The only trick with these airbrush guns is you have to keep them insanely clean. So when I clean mine, I take the whole thing apart. So let me dump out my ink. And I'll kind of show you there's a needle inside that you have to keep really clean and that's what the thing that's gonna get jammed. So this comes off the compressor. and then you can pull your needle out and be very careful and you wanna make sure this whole needle is super clean because this is what's gonna get jammed up and this is what's gonna allow, not allow your ink to go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash this bad boy up and keep going. All right, I hope that was super informational about the three different types of way that you can watercolor and the three different versions of watercolors that you could even use. And I hope this really helped you. I just wanna challenge you now to use these techniques in so many different ways. The, I just want to open the door of endless possibilities of how to add watercolors to make all of your felt projects more dynamic and more realistic and more fun. Uh, be sure to comment below with whatever you're planning on doing this, what your ideas are. Also, once you start watercoloring, be sure to tag me on Instagram at The Hardwood Forest. I want to see all of your fun projects. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And all the links below for everything I used today uh, will be in the description. So check those out and happy watercoloring.